Welcome to Ella's Beef Easter's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. KOTK. It's good to know that the Pope is, what's the word? Robust. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he is, isn't he? <laughs> not, unlike a, not unlike a sack of lifeless potatoes. Just sort of sitting there in the chair, molded into a vaguely human shape. All right. It's uh, the Rick Everson Show live in the studio as a hot talk to Nitty KJK in beautiful downtown Portland, Oregon. It's 3 minutes 12 seconds after the hour of uh, 12, and this the month of October in the year of our Lord 2003. Thanks for coming by. We're here with uh, Tim Riley in the KJK newsroom, F. Matt Peterson, uh, Sarah Dillon, and uh, later on this hour, CNN radio correspondent Gary Baumgarten uh, is going to be with us today. We got a bunch of requests. We'll be playing that uh, the new song by The Low again. We played it once yesterday. We. Uh, we didn't get a chance to play it again yesterday, so we'll play it, uh, we'll play it a couple times today, the new song by The Low, simply entitled F. Matt. Uh, Low and many people going to be no, in attendance. No sense in overplaying that. No, there's, you can't overplay such a masterpiece, such a uh, such a fine piece of lyricism. It can't be overplayed. There's no such thing as too much. Uh, well, you know, Radio Gangster was so good, we had to expect some some fall-off in the quality <laughs> of his follow-up work. The so, sophomore slump no, was unavoidable. It's not bad, but, you know, it's, it's definitely not up to The Low's generally high standard. What I meant to say is we'll be playing that every hour today, and uh, not 60 minutes will pass in which that song is not played at least once for you. Uh, hey, but speaking of low, uh, coming up two weeks from today, it is two weeks from tonight, it's two weeks and about seven hours from now, uh, the Rick Emerson Listener Party number four, which I think we are now officially calling Halloween Hangover. Is that Mike in Portland came up with that? That I think is. We're officially naming it Halloween Hangover. I like Drunks and Sluts a go-go. It lacks a certain linguistic flow, though. So, Halloween hangover. It is, uh, it's two weeks from tonight at the new Phoenix Last Frontier uh, Casino in La Center, Washington. Starting at 7 p.m., going till 9 p.m. or whenever anybody else, uh, you know, kind of gets poured into their taxi cabs outside. Featuring headline and musical act Richard Cheese, Lounge Against the Machine, uh, who will be on the show with us tomorrow, by the way. Tomorrow we'll be talking to Richard Cheese of Lounge Against the Machine. Uh, and uh, so he'll be the headlining act. Uh, uh, Tim Riley Factor going to be performing... Uh, our brand new uh, hit single, uh, Gene Simmons took my girl for me. Uh, also, uh, the entire cast and crew, the Rick Emerson Show, going to be there. Our new 1080 girls are going to be there. Uh, Sam, Jessica, Sarah. We've got uh, Grace and Glory, who are some more potential 1080 girls coming in tomorrow. But they're all going to be in attendance two weeks from tonight. Going to be giving away the stand-up uh, arcade game from uh, my apartment. Uh, I know we've got a bunch of stuff that the casino's giving away, too. They're giving away blackjack dollars. We've got a huge... I really can't tell, because if it doesn't come true... I'm going to look like a big, uh, a big dick. So I can't, I don't want to say what it is, but we've got our man Rob White over there at the, uh, the sales center. They've, he's, he's working on, on an item to give away. I don't want to say what it is. I don't even want to tease it because it's, uh, because if it doesn't come together, then you, you know, you, you just sit and you dwell on it. And you, you drink heavily at night thinking about the chance you lost to win such an item. So, but I, we, we should know soon. Uh, but if he puts this together, it's the best thing you've ever. It's the best thing you've ever seen given away anywhere. So we'll we'll know. We will tell you as soon as we know about that. It's five zero three two five zero ten eighty in Portland or one eight hundred seven two seven five nine five five. Coming up this hour, CNN radio correspondent Gary Baumgarten coming up later in the show. Top five most overplayed party songs of all time, courtesy of our friends at the uh, Portland Mercury. And uh, where your phone calls? It's five zero three two five zero ten eighty in Portland or one eight hundred seven two seven five nine five five. Here's the reason you came. It's Tim Riley in the KOTK newsroom. Time for Rick Emerson, it must be new. 
How did 21 hours take away so soon? Turn off the TV, hands off my radio, damn it. I gotta hear Rick's thesis on what's wrong with the planet. I'm stuck on I-5 and better get used to chilling. Cause it's all backed up, I got the traffic from Sarah Dillon. I'm mad about the traffic and just because of that, I'ma call up the show and sponsor an F Matt. Clyde Lewis is the man and don't forget that. I don't know what he does, but his name sounds fat. Jolie from the front desk is unstoppable. Find out how chicks think, yo, that's impossible. I better come up with a gig like a threesome. I never did Then Rick will get my song And play it for all the kids But if not You never know That this record was ever made He's the radio gangster And he's got to get paid Cause he's the radio Gangster Yeah And he's not having it The radio Gangster Yeah And he's not having it The radio Gangster Yeah And he's not having it The radio Gangster Yeah And he's not having it It's not just news, it's news with Tim Riley, live from the newsroom of Hot Talk 1080 KOTK. And brought to you by EditHere.com, websites as easy as see it, edit it, and save it. Well, false alarm, a police bomb squad called in to the kettle chips plant in Salem after two military mortar rounds were found in a shipment of potatoes. Luckily, they didn't end up in a bag. The bomb squad successfully removed the mortars. One of the mortars broke apart but did not detonate. Apparently, these came from a potato field that was used during World War II as a place to train soldiers. So there's still a few of those out there. This is a full-on like Paul Harvey story we're reading right here. It is. Yeah. That's the- kettle chips. Had me some kettle chips yesterday. And? Uh, I'm just going to... Never mind. I didn't know they were made here. I thought they were from Idaho. I was going to make... Well, the potatoes are from Idaho. All right. But they're, uh, they manufacture a kettle chips in yes. Oregon snack? Yes, they are. All right. Proudly made in Salem. Local, so where, local product. Let me ask you there. So where are Tim's Chips headquartered? Is that here or is that in Washington? That's a good... I have to look at the back. Does anybody back. actually I know... I think where, it's in Washington, but I but I, I may be completely wrong. Tim's Cascade? Yeah, but they are, are... I think they, they're in Washington. But they are from the Northwest. It's not like yeah. one of those things where it's, you know, it's it's from like Sacramento or something and they're posing as being from the Northwest. What about Orrita Potatoes? Are they from Oregon or Idaho? Or a combination of both. I don't know. I have nothing. Okay, we've spent too much time talking about potato I think chips. so, yes. Uh, the final two defendants in alleged Portland terrorist cell have pled guilty and agreed to serve 18 years in the federal pen. Patrice Ford, who's a guy, and Jeffrey Battle, who also is, are in custody. One suspect remains at large. The men are among the seven Portland area residents charged with plotting to wage war against U.S. troops in Afghanistan. What kind of a name for a man is Patrice? Every time you see a story like this where there's some guy named Ashley or... Yeah. Terry, that's like T-E-R-I. Don't you just want to track down his parents and ask what the hell they were thinking? Didn't you know you were going to do... What, is he a terrorist? Yeah. Well, this is clearly why. Uh, you know, you spend your whole life be, uh, having the snot kicked out of you and be, uh, you know, being shoved into lockers, you know, in the, like, uh, you know, near the gymnasium. Uh, you know, you're going to have some issues to work out. You're going to need to be proving some things to people. You can't be, you can't be naming your children Patrice. Patrice is a bad name for a girl, and much less for you know, anybody toting a penis around. Yeah. Where are they from? They're, they're, yeah, they're from Auburn, Washington. Where's Auburn, Washington? No one knows. And you, you could actually make Patrice, because the way they spell P A T R I C E is the way that guy's name is spelled. Just go by Trice. Trice. I'm telling you, it it'd work. The guy could pull it off. Trice it's is a nice. it's a more manly name. Yeah, than that Patrice. only works if you're black. How about Pat? I, I, I think I think he is though. You don't want to be called Pat. He's gonna have a, a hard running. time. He's gonna have a hard time in jail. Oh, Patrice! <laughs> Seriously, welcome, <laughs> welcome to Cell Block C. <laughs> Patrice is gonna meet Bubba and realize why he didn't want to be in jail. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. no way that Patrice I guess it's is. Paris all along. Patrice is not topping any time in this uh, this life. That's never no. gonna happen. <laughs> well, uh, Patrice's lawyer speaks. The second report was not yep. forwarded to detectives, and it is, it is unknown the completely the wrong. I know. That report- I don't right. know what happened. No, you that's know, noon. Stuff- that's noon too. That's what Tim gave me. I know. It's my. I guess it's not transferred. Okay. At some point, yet. can we get on the phone, whoever it is that designed this incredibly retarded software system that we use here to to manage our sound bites? I've been on this show for five years. Yeah. 
I've been doing this same show in this same time slot on this station, give or take, for about five years. And really, we've had the same batting average for about all five years. That like, like two out of every three sound bites are correct. One out of every three ends up just being random noises from the Wizard of Oz or something. It ends up being nothing that has anything to do with the actual story. And I know that it's and I know that it's not usually our fault. No. Uh, I know that it's not miscommunication. It's not mislabeling. I know that it's that we use this system called the Audio Vault system, which. I, you know, really must have just been assembled by mongoloids because it's just it's just the most ill-conceived, difficult to use, shoddily constructed, poorly operating uh, computer system for a radio station I've ever seen in my life. Are we going to be keeping this system when we go over to the new building? No. no. All right. So we move. We, we the, move. We move from uh, Audio Vault to a system called Enco. In the name of Sweet God Almighty, is it too much to ask that our sound bites play correctly? Yes. <laughs> Apparently it is. Well, let's try some other ones. <laughs> let's move along, because life does. Well, they're going to have to write a doggone rule because it threatens a 100-year-old's residency. A McMinnville man, we talked about this earlier, facing an eviction notice, and it's not because he failed to pay his rent, it's because of his pet Rottweiler. Floyd Follett has been living in his trailer for 33 years. When he allegedly signed a lease, pets were allowed. But a year and a half ago, the new owners took over and changed the rules that allowed pets... But not Rottweilers. Lloyd's upset about this. I just don't like people telling me what to do when they haven't any authority to tell me what to do. Oh, I love that guy. Can we play that again? What's his name? Floyd, Floyd. or Lloyd? Floyd. Floyd. Follett. He sounds like a Floyd. Seriously, he does, doesn't he? Floyd's one of those names you don't. He kind of looks like anymore. Fred Gwynn. You know, I. I just don't like people telling me what to do when they haven't any authority to tell me what to do. I think I've just gotten a glimpse of my future here by looking at uh, Floyd. I'm all over this. I love Floyd. So, he's 100 years old, and they're trying to take away his Rottweiler. Yeah, you can't do that. And, McMin and he's living in a trailer. The guy's life is bad enough. He's 100 years old living in a trailer in McMinnville. Just let him have the freaking dog. I mean, why would you... The question is, if you're 100 years old, why would you want to... I mean, really, if you're 100 years old and you've got a Rottweiler, you know, or any sort of aggressive dog... I mean, at any point, you're just about three days away from being some stool. You know what I mean? Uh, so it, he'd, he'd beat somebody up. It seems so, without a problem. You're just trying to goad me into <laughs> another fight on air. I'm just making, is that what is that what you're trying to no, do? No, I'm just I'm I'm just saying. You know, it's like that guy keels over one of these days. That kibble's only going to hold out for so long. You know what I mean? And then it's they, then they, it's floor actually, all the way around. Well, while they while they are aggressive towards no, Pete, no, 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 hold on. This conversation. Okay, are we talking about a hundred year old? They, they, while they can oh, be aggressive towards people like outside, they're very, very protective of their owners. Yeah. So an o older guy like that having one, it's probably not a bad idea because it's gonna the dog will kind of take care of him. Man, Floyd sounds like a mean bastard too. He'd probably sick the dog it, on you. He'd probably beat you with his cane if I you love got Floyd. close enough. And Mitchell so Bickford better stay away from his trailer. So they're not gonna evict. Did you hear? Oh my God! Did you hear that the Mitchell Bickford? I don't have the story in front of me. But he's now he's, he's apparently they found like an additional like 16 people or something that he swindled out of a bunch of money. Mitchell Bickford has just been grifting his way across the Northwest for many many years now apparently, just racking up victims, uh, you know, just like like they were chips on a table. Just Mitchell just, is out of control. I don't know what the hell is going on with that guy, and I don't know what the hell is going on with us that we got enough people that are dense enough they could be taken in by him. But so are they? Are we gonna do a biopic on him? Are they, his name was Mitchell Bickford. Uh, did, so are they are they or are they not going to evict Floyd? Well, they're going to have a little talk with him, so it looks like all this publicity has helped. All right. All right. Uh, I'm not going to sit by and idly watch while Floyd is evicted. It's not going to happen. Meanwhile, a 93-year-old, uh, make that a 95-year-old granny, is facing charges after allegedly knocking out her 77-year-old neighbor with a garden shovel. The two women have been yeah, arguing yeah. over a new fence the elderly <laughs> neighbor, known only as Martha Ann, had put up. Her neighbor, Ann D., said the wire fence... Allowed uh, rotting apples from Martha's tree to fall through into her garden. Martha told officers she had it up with the young young woman's nagging and then grabbed a shovel and whacked her over the head. Oh, see, that's completely that is completely bitching. There is no way in which that's not a great story. Cause the, no the, the, Rottweiler involved. No, and you're just like an old person. It's like, what do you care? They're not going to put you in prison. It's like that guy, that guy in Florida, that guy that's 85 and has robbed three banks. And it's like, what do they do? They put him in, they put him in the pokey for a couple of days, and they send him home again. You know, they give him a box lunch and put him on the bus. It's he's 85. Once you once you live to be like 80 years old, you're at you can do whatever you want, and no one's going to do anything about it. And you can always just go, and you don't have to, you know, as soon as somebody crosses you, just you whack him on the side of the head with a shovel. It's completely acceptable when you're an old person. A man facing the death penalty for killing three women in Kansas and stuffing them into barrels has pled guilty to killing five more people in Missouri. 
By pleading guilty now, John Robinson avoids a trial and the death penalty in Missouri. He admits to killing two women and a paraplegic teenage girl. Their bodies discovered stuffed in 55-gallon drums into a storage locker. He also admitted killing two other women who disappeared in the mid to late 80s. No charges have been filed in the disappearances of those two. Victims. I always wonder about these guys because Jeffrey Dahmer did the same thing where he had the guys marinating in his basement and a bunch of drums. And you, they've always got the drums going on. And I wouldn't even know where to buy a 55-gallon. I'm not asking for advice on how to buy 55-gallon drums. I can see Matt I've, reaching I've, for the I've, mic. I've purchased several. So Okay, that's the thing you, you want to say out loud. I can tell you where to get them. Here's the thing. There's only one reason that a guy who, who you know who isn't like a cement mixer is purchasing 55 gallon, especially if you're like this guy, obviously, and, or Dom are going in there. I'd like, what, what can I help you with today? I'd like uh, five 55 gallon drums and a big bag of lye. <laughs> okay. Anything else? A hose and uh, also a hacksaw. Okay. Uh, there you go. You know, it's like going. You know what it is? It's like going in and buying a you know a, a huge rifle and one bullet. It's just sort of the thing that tends to arouse suspicion. Couldn't he begin to tell you where to buy any of those things? It must be some serial killer supply company or something. Some must be some 800 number you can call if you're some sort of deviant sexual predator. Many many people out in the country use them to burn in. Country folk. Country folk use them as burn barrels. All right. How do you like that? Uh, Canadian Corner, two Canadian stories today. Listen up, those north of the 48th parallel. These are for you. A Canadian trekker apparently suffocated after he was knocked into a 15-foot deep. He was buried alive in sludge. He is a sludge hauler. He died uh, a sludge hauler. in the Sumter Township when he fell into a pit and was buried alive by his cargo as it dumped from the truck. The driver apparently fell from the gate of the back of the truck, released the unhinged door, knocking him into the pit as he prepared to unload the sledge at Carlton Farms Land Hill. He was uh, knocked into a 15-foot deep trench, and up to 35 tons of sludge burst onto him. And you know, at every point in this uh, in this chain of circumstances, he probably thought that like it wasn't going to get any worse. You know, I hit myself in the face with a door. Well, and, oh, no, I've fallen into a 15-foot deep hole pit. Whoa, now the truck is, uh, you know, starting to pour sludge. Oh, now I'm dead. 35 tons of... What is sludge, anyway? Is sludge like a... Uh, is sludge like a uh, gruel? Is it one of those catch-all phrases for some sort of sluice-type liquid that doesn't really mean anything? Uh, let me look at this. Uh, the sludge from the city of Toronto was not treated with lime and might have appeared to steam because of decomposing biologicals. Oh, that's... Uh, and by oh, the way, he, he fell head first and was only his... Uh, let's see. He was only visible from the knees to his feet when they, <laughs> they found him. Oh, Canadian that's story. Not a, that's not a picture you could show at the wake either. No, that's that, not a. <laughs> that happened in Ontario. Enjoying his last few moments on Earth. Here's Just another a Canadian story. Pair of boots and a pile of poo. A new car has to be renamed for the Canadian market after the manufacturers were informed of an unfortunate double meaning. General Motors are still working on the new name for the Lacrosse after they learned the word is slang for masturbation oh. in French speaking Quebec. The mid sized model expected to be launched late next year. Would be called the Buick Lacrosse, which it is in the U.S. Uh, GM's vice president Bob Lett says he wasn't aware of the Lacrosse's alternative meaning, despite being able to speak French after spending three years living in Paris. But that's a different kind of French than they speak in Canada. Yeah. Uh, although I knew every expression existing in the French language for self gratification, including the crudest ones known to man, he did not know about Lacrosse. Oh, here we got it. Sludge uh, noun, precipitated. Quote, solid matter, end quote, produced by sewage treatment processes. Is there a worse way to end your life? Buried under 35 tons. Not even buried under. Took a header into someone else's fecal matter. I mean, not that it would be discernibly better if it were your own. Mmm, lunch hour. <laughs> Hi. How are you? All right, we'll be back. It's a Rick Emerson show on Hot Talk and Eddie K2K. More ahead. Stay there. Live from Portland, only on Hot Talk 1080 KOTK. Got an opinion? 
pick up the phone and call. Lines are open at 503-250-1080 or 1-800-727-5955. Rick Emerson on Hot Talk 1080 KOTK. All right, 503-250-1080 in Portland or 1-800-727-5955. Uh, coming up here in just a moment, CNN radio correspondent uh, Gary Baumgarten from New York City. Uh, later on, we got the, today's top five. Top five most overplayed party songs uh, of all time. And we've got, oh, by the way, by the by, as my grandmother would say, uh, we got uh, this horrible snafu with the uh, the 1080 girls yesterday. So uh, Jessica and Sarah, who are our are, are, are most recent two additions to the 1080 girl team, they were here yesterday. Matt brought uh, his digital camera to get some pictures, as is our want. And then the, I don't know, the camera's infested by gremlins or something. It, just, it bit the dust like 30 seconds before we went to take the pictures. So uh, we did not, we were not able to pull together pictures of Jessica and Sarah. Uh, I did later on in the evening get a couple pictures uh, of Jessica. Uh, she did send us some, so those are actually posted, and we'll do our best uh, to get some of. Uh, of Sarah and of Jessica and Sarah together. We, we, later we may on. have an issue getting some of Grace and, uh, and Glory tomorrow as because well. Of your camera? Yeah, my, my camera is actually like a, a paperweight. Now. I may be incorrect about this. Uh, weren't we actually just recently? I think I read something about how we were purchased by a gigantic radio corporation with revenues in the tens of millions of dollars. No, you're, you're foolish. But I will yeah. be getting a new digital camera, I believe, this weekend. I mean, that doesn't actually so. mean that we have a printer that works or anything. So, But I'm thinking that no. maybe a camera, it might That's be a something. Stretch. It, you know, one of the 75 radio stations they own in the Portland market may actually have a camera we can use uh, to, to take some photographs. But I, you know, I don't we can, press we my can, luck We can make nothing. some calls. We'll uh, we'll see if we can get another one in here before tomorrow. Sorry, Cody so. Chrome box camera. No. <laughs> Seriously, like, can we get maybe just a sketch artist or something? Can we maybe get one just... of the little disposables from next door. God, and, you know, yeah, all right, no one of those little magic slates you buy at the supermarket for your kid for like a dollar ninety nine, where you lift it up to erase it. Anyway, uh, the point is, go to RickEmerson.com. There's a couple good pictures of uh, Jessica on there, and we will get uh, some additional pictures uh, as time goes on. Uh, tomorrow, Grace and Glory uh, are going to be in two to audition for the role of uh, 1080 Girls. All right, uh, we're going to go to the house of Rick here in just a moment. We'll also get David. we got more from Tim Riley. Let's welcome now to the Rick Emerson Show, our man in New York City. CNN Radio Correspondent, Man of the World, Gary Baumgarten. How are you, my friend? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, it's talking about this, this horrible accident that happened yesterday, the Staten Island Ferry. Uh, I haven't ridden uh, the Staten Island Ferry. It's been it's been quite a while since I've done one of those. But I, Sarah, uh, Dylan, and I, the producer, were talking about this yesterday. And, you know, they uh, those things, the, the kind of freaky thing about those ferries, people don't really realize that they go pretty, pretty quickly. I mean, they attain a pretty good speed, and they don't really come to a stop or slow down until they get very close to the docking station. Isn't that right? Right, uh, but in this case, uh, it apparently never slowed down before slamming uh, skewed into the uh, the concrete uh, pier there. So that's what caused all the deaths and, uh, and injury because the concrete permeated the hall and mm. people actually got crushed. It was a pretty gruesome sight. Now, is it? I mean, are they? They weren't thinking this was intentional or anything, were they? Or did they, it, was, it was an accident. Did they have any idea how it happened? Well, the pilot either fell asleep at the switch or passed out. Um, he is claiming that he failed to take some blood pressure medication and it caused him to pass out. Um, actually, he lives right near the uh, Staten Island Ferry dock and he immediately ran home and attempted suicide and he's in critical condition right now in the same hospital where most of the victims were taken. Yeah, this is the, uh, he went home and he apparently cut his wrist and shot himself twice in the chest with some sort of a pellet gun but was unable to so, according to the New York Post, he, for whatever reason, he accidentally shifted the boat. He actually sped up. He shifted the boat into higher, into full throttle, uh, and and went right into the Staten Island Ferry Terminal at just a very, very high speed. So, what is the, so what is the, what is the fatality count? Where it's 10, 11 people? Uh, it's 10. There was an 11th that they thought uh, was floating around still in the water, but she just showed up someplace alive, and so the uh, the death count is at 10, but. There are a number of people, I think about 16 of them, who are mm. still in critical condition. So the, the count could go higher. And obviously a huge investigation underway. The NTSB, the uh, Coast Guard, and all the local authorities uh, cooperating with one another to try to figure out what exactly happened here. What I find very interesting, and I, I, this is a question I asked right off because I'm a sailor and I know um, a little bit about boats, not a lot, but enough. And... Uh, uh, I, I said, I asked 
uh, a, a certified captain today, would they only have one person in the wheelhouse? Right. And right. the answer is no. Uh, the protocol is that there are two, the captain and the assistant captain. So presumably if the guy fell asleep or passed out, the other guy could take over and obviate something like this from occurring. So that begs the question, why did this occur? How many people were up there at the time of the crash? Yeah, and I, you know, and far be it for me to speculate about the mental state of a guy who obviously is upset for a whole lot of reasons. But, I mean, that... I don't know the fact that he would that he would immediately go home and try to off himself. I mean, I'd certainly they're look, uh, obviously going to be looking into that to see if there's because I, I mean I don't mean to laugh about it, make light of it, but there's the New York Post. You know the headline is you know neighbors say pilot was a quiet man, which of course is what they always say about people who not that that happened to this guy, but you know people who you know who snap a little bit. Right. Uh, you know that's what they always say. So that, has well, this ever happened before? Is this is this the first time they've ever this has ever happened? Yeah. Well, last year or the year before. It came in a little bit too fast and hit the pilings, and some people got uh, bumped around a little bit, and there were a number of injuries, but nothing like this. And they do come in fast. Yeah. I've written that, um, as, as your producer indicated, I've, I've written that, uh, that uh, Staten Island Ferry many times, and sometimes they're coming in so quickly. And again, as a sailor, I wonder sometimes about, about the procedures that they use, and I imagine that there's going to be uh, some changes, yeah. and uh, you know maybe there'll be some testing if it's a health issue with this guy uh, for the future captains and pilots of these ships. All right, there you go. There's CNN radio correspondent Gary Baumgarten in uh, New York City. So we'll uh, let you know what you find out about that. Yeah, it's just terrible. I, I mean, I've only, I've only ever ridden the Statlander Ferry a couple of times, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's freaky because it's. I mean, it, it seems uh, you know the, uh, a lot of people you know here you go to you go to Seattle and you ride those ferries you're going to Bain, you know Bainbridge Island or something, but it's just that one in New York. It just seems like it comes in so quickly, just at a, you know on a normal day. And for this guy to fall asleep and just you know right there on top of the throttle, it's just a bad scene. Here's uh, let's go to the house of uh, nope. That one more time. Go to the house of uh, Rick. It's uh, thought to Rob. What's up, man? Hey, man. Just sending my uh, RSVP in for the party. Excellent. And uh, I got a couple questions. Is this a 21 and over gig? I'm glad you asked, Rob, at the house of Rick. Uh, it is, in fact, 18 and over. Obviously, you got to be 21 to uh, to drink there, but it's uh, 18 to get in, which is good because, I mean, it's, uh, Jessica is one of our new Tenetti girls. Just turned 20, I think, last week. Because at Billy Reed, she had to stand outside on the patio the entire time. But, uh, yeah, the new Phoenix Last Frontier Casino is an 18-and-over establishment. Excellent. And also, um, last year I kind of, you know, headed up the bus on the way up there, and I was wondering if I could uh, do that for you again this year. Uh, what, uh, it was last year, wasn't it? You and Christina? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'd be more than happy to have you do that. Excellent. I'd love to do that. All right. Yeah, the uh, bus. And uh, speaking of which, in a brilliant segue, the bus, uh, we did the tally yesterday, and uh, I think we're a little, we're like 60% capacity right now. Uh, so what you want to do is if you are interested in being on the Rick Emerson bus that's going up to and back from the casino for the listener party, you don't have to worry about drinking and driving or being on the road with people who have. Uh, it's $10.80, basically, just to cover our bus costs and the cost of the party. $10.80. Send an email with your contact info and how many tickets you want to bus at rickemerson.com. Bus at rickemerson.com. Uh, There's still about 20 seats available, so you want to get those in uh, as soon as possible. Yeah, so we'll put you on the bus, and uh, you'll be there up, and it, it's go. And what it's, it, it leaves here like 5.30 or something, 5.45. It's up there till like 9.45, so you'll be able to catch all of Richard Cheese's set, the whole thing, hang out, catch a catch a last drink, and then get on the bus to come home. I can't wait to see Richard Cheese. Right. Oh, but that guy's great. I mean, you saw him at Dante's. I uh, think, hey, you know, I thought that it was really cool, and he really liked you, and that he was going to come up and do this for you, but then I figured it out. It was really, it's Christina. Yeah, well, he's got a not so secret love for for Christina. So I and I told him that was kind of what sealed the deal is when I said that she was going to be coming back up from. And and I have I shouldn't say I won't say what it is, but I actually have the inside scoop. I already know what she's coming dressed as too, because uh, Christina Carlson is our former producer, moved away last year, went to Bend. Uh, she came last year as Roller Girl. A lot of you guys remember that she came as a porn star, which, given the fact that she now works at a Christian book publishing firm, is just. It's one of those things that's even more fantastical in retrospect. But you know I, those photos are going to come back to haunt her someday. I know what she's coming at this year, and I dare say it may, in fact, top uh, last year. She want to be with that. All right, so there you go. So it's just Rob from the House of Rick, who's going to be on the uh, Rick Emerson party bus. If you are interested in securing seats on it, just drop an email with your name, contact info, like a phone number, and how many uh, tickets you are interested in uh, to bus at rickemerson.com. Uh, in Portland, a full time. Hello? Hi, Darth Vader. A full-time listener in Portland. What's up? Hey, how you doing, Rick? What's up? Hey, uh, looking forward to the Halloween party. My Excellent. girlfriend's going to, uh, I think she's going to flash you again. I'm sorry, what? I think my girlfriend's going to flash you again. She says she wants to. Well, that's always good. <laughs> hey, uh, about your uh, dirty story, you had one about six months ago. Uh, 
but somebody drowned in a cesspool. Yeah. And he, uh, they got a... Uh, Cell phone? Oh, that's right. There was an, it was in Africa. There was a guy who there was like an open latrine yeah, pay, that was like th yeah, it was like twenty bucks to go get a, get, get the cell phone. Well, it was like three feet wide but forty feet deep or something. And yeah. for some reason, they had cell phones but not actual toilets, which indicates that maybe their sociological priorities are a bit jumbled. But but the guy drops his phone in there. Leans in to get it, wham! Right into the uh, latrine. Another guy jumps in to save him, wham! Right into the retreat. Another, and they, like they lost three different guys going after like a cell phone that was probably free with your Radio Shack subscription. Well, uh, that just goes to show you the, the value of a cell phone is worth three lives. Seriously, that's there you go. There's David. All right, it's Tim Riley in the KTK newsroom. You know, I'm looking at the price for hello. One's twenty dollars. One's thirty-five. Here's another one, forty dollars. What these? First, these are like Halloween parties. Uh, I certainly hope there's one coming up that doesn't charge an admission fee. Well, Tim Riley, I'm, I'm glad you asked that because let me tell you that the uh, Rick Emerson listener party number four, uh, Halloween Hangover, which is happening in uh, La Center two weeks from tonight, 7 to 9 p.m., is absolutely free. There's no cover. Did you say free? Yeah, I did say free. And not only free, there will be many chances to win. No purchase necessary to win many fine items, including the uh, stand-up arcade game from my apartment. The 1080 girls are going to be there, and uh, I'm to understand there will be uh, various uh, specials on adult beverages. See you when you want to be there. It's 503-250-1080 in Portland at 1-800-727-5955. we got more on the way. Don't go anywhere. It's the Rick Emerson Show on Hot Talk 1080. KOTK. Stay there. We will continue. Rick Emerson. Only from Hot Talk 1080. KOTK. That's a good point. I don't know. It's like when I was uh, in school, they had this comic book they gave us in health class. I don't know. I must have been in like fourth or fifth grade. And uh, they came and they gave us you know, some little lecture about people having seizures, which I guess is maybe seizures are rampant among fifth graders at this point. But they, I swear to God, I wish I still had it. They gave us this comic book. And it was a comic book called Seizure Man. <laughs> and it was, and it was like this guy with a cowl, you know, <laughs> like the cape, and like a full-on, like, like S with a big jagged lightning bolt underneath it. And Seizure Man would come and like land at your schoolyard when somebody was having a seizure and like put a stick in their mouth or something. Yeah, so they don't swallow their tongue. And they wouldn't yeah, gnaw their tongue off or something. And so then apparently you have to have a stick handy. Then he'd say, you know, kids, it's good to have, you know, seizure knowledge. I am Seizure Man. And then he would just sort of fly away. And that was that was sort of the extent of what Seizure Man did. I'm not making any of these things up. Here's Tim Riley in the KFTK Newsroom. Now for the Bush Watch. He's the president in residence. He's kind of in charge. He's got the whole country saying, that's my Bush. Life is hard. That's the price of fame when you're president. Everyone knows, knows your name. name. Hey, what's that thing? It's my Bush. I can't believe he's actually in the White House. So that's all my That's my Bush. Ah! Well, Governor Arnold introduces the president on his visit to Riverside, California this morning. There is no greater ally that this Gordon State has in Washington than our president, my dear friend, President George W. Bush. My dear Please friend. The president. the president steps up to the podium. Some accuse us both of not being able to speak the language. <laughs> We both have big biceps. Well, well, two out of three isn't bad. And the president thanks members of the audience from the Air Force visiting from nearby March Air Force Base. I presume you left somebody behind to make sure Air Force One is fueled up. <laughs> Jesus, what the hell was that? Sounds like a groundhog. Jesus. Imagine how much white bread is consumed by the people that are at such an event. Uh, the president faces America's problems. The challenges we face today cannot be met with timid, timid actions or bitter, bitter words. He'll enjoy today's visit. And then he's off to uh, Asia. That's uh, today's Bush Watch. He's Bush the watch. president in residence. He's kind of in charge. He's got the whole country saying, that's my birthday. So among those the president will meet. And he's not going to like this guy, Malaysian President Mohammed, who's also at the same time hosting a Muslim convention. He'll uh, meet with Bush soon. Is there no other way than to ask our young people to blow themselves up and kill people 
and invite the massacre of more of our, of our own people. It cannot be that there is no other way. 1.3 billion Muslims cannot be defeated by a few million Jews. Another one. Yeah. Uh, so right. the president's got his work cut out for him there. Hey, the Pope is uh, celebrating uh, Mass today. The 83-year-old Pope has, uh, has, uh, has celebrated another. Was it, it was just a few hours ago? He's I very guess. spry and robust. Yeah, he's, he's just. He's. I can't even describe how robust I wish he is. I, I was as energetic as the Pope. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, never mind. Skip it. I'm just gonna move. I'm just gonna move on. There's no. I've exhausted it. There's. I think just for the once we got to the idea of the notion of sawing the Pope's bones in half and putting him on the cover of uh, you know Gerber magazine. I think I, I, there's just nowhere left for me to go. Well, he's much more active than he appears on television. We're told. I'm sure that he's just moments away from jogging around the block or something. And let me let me just say though that I don't know if you've ever taken a good long look at the Pope when he's. When he's speaking here, but you know he does just sort of have this dazed look on his face all the time, as though he's waiting for his morning omelet to show up. It's sort of like he's not even really sure whether he's at the kitchen table or in front of thousands of people spreading the holy word of Jesus. It, it looks like he might, in fact, just be sitting there waiting for somebody to come and spit some chewed up beets into his mouth. But I'm not entirely sure about that. As a matter of fact, it's out for the Pope watch. <laughs> Pope celebrating the 25th anniversary on the papal throne, or his high chair, whatever he's on. He uh, blesses the Chicago Cubs. I want the heads of the five families here. He also lifted the curse of the goat with a prayer. The light and power of your spirit onto those you have chosen to lead your fold. Sound, Chicago Cubs a whip. It sounds like an old guy rooting around under the bed who can't find his socks and Somebody is really confused. Needs to prop his head up a little bit. Do you see how it's kind of hanging off to the side? Well, it's because he doesn't have a spine anymore. Oh, they stick that horrible heavy hat on him, and it's just kind of like it's horrible. <laughs> you know, that's what they give to, to uh, kids on their birthday at Burger King. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because his. Well, he needs to be like. Well, his neck bones it's are just... It's like a chair wheelchair. Well, if they, if they put a bungee cord like through him where it doesn't show through his back, around the back of the chair, I think he'd be fine. Well, his, his neck bones are just dust. I mean, it's, what are you going to do, man? You can't prop up sauerkraut. You know what I'm saying? It's just... Somebody just grabbed his hand. The finger fell off. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I think that's the end of the... Oh, <laughs> All right. There you go. He just... You know what he looks like? No, never no. okay. No, we're done. We we should just be done at this point. I'm just saying. I'm saying he looks like that guy at the end of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade who chooses poorly when it comes to picking the Grail off the shelf. You know what I'm talking about. He looks like a baby. Yeah. All right, it's five zero three two five zero today in Portland at one eight hundred seven two seven five nine five five. We got Nothing more wrong with that pole. It's the uh, he's he's. Robust and jocular as always. He's the very picture of health. All right, we'll be back. It's the Rick Emerson Show. Stay there. Rick Emerson, live from Portland, only on Hot Talk 1080 KOTK. From the KOTK Newsroom, here's your Northwest Update. Hey, Riley with the news. Brought to you by your friend in the diamond business, the Shane Company, on the western corner of Highway 217 and Shoals Ferry Road, open Monday through Friday till 8, Saturday and Sunday till 5, or online at shaneco.com. Well, they call themselves Citizens Against the Government Takeover. In the last several weeks, the political action committees bombarded radio and TV with ads telling you to vote against ballot measures 26, 51, and 52. And if approved, would help Multnomah County take over PGE. Well, the fact is, citizens against the government takeover are utilities and utility executives heavily bankrolling these commercials. Pacific Corp and PGE doled out about a half million dollars in in-kind contributions to help cover the $748,000 spent on this campaign so far. In other news today, there's a big jackpot out there. The winning Megabucks lottery jackpot worth $1.4 million remains in claim. Time is running out. The winning ticket sold in Medford for the October 30th, 2002 Megabucks drawing. So if you have any tickets lying around, you may want to check. Winning numbers are 10, 14, 21, 29, 33, 35. 
And the Texas Lottery Commission has entered into a contract to join Washington and nine other states in the Mega Millions Lottery. For the Metro Forecast for this afternoon, rated times and breezy highs in the 60s. More of the same tonight, lose about 50. Tim Riley, KOTK News. Talk.